Hello friends. Today we will learn about eccentric loaded connection. So let us consider this structure. This has a column and there is a gusset plate and this gusset plate and this column is connected through a number of bolts. So let us call this as a group of bolts. Now we load P. This is applied to this gasset plate. So first this load will transfer to this gasset plate and then through these bolts this will get transferred to this column and finally this load will go to the ground. Now we have one question in this case. Where is the center of gravity of this bolt group is located? So where is the center of gravity that is CZ of bolt groups or bolts group. So to answer this basically we will use the idea that we learned in class 10 plus 2 that is using symmetry we can locate the center of gravity of this bolt system. So you see if I see along the bi direction this is the line of symmetry that is half of the bolt lies this side and half of the bolt lies this side. Similarly we can find a line of symmetry along the x axis. So this is the line that is a line of symmetry along the x axis. So half of the bolt lies this side and half of the bolt lies this side. This means this point is basically centroid in this case that is the CZ of bolt groups. So this point is basically let me write it here. So this is center of gravity of bolt bolts group. Now if we ask a question that whether this load is passing through this centroid? No, in this case basically there is a distance. This distance is E. So bolt group and the centroid of the bolt group does not uh, passes through the load. So this kind of loading is called eccentric loading. So whatever we discuss, let us summarize. So we said the first question we answered that is where is the center of gravity of this bolt group system and then we said we can use symmetry to find the location of bolt group in this case and the second question is does the load passes through the center of gravity of the bolt system no in this case this is no so this is a basically example of eccentric connection or eccentric loaded connection. So you see what is eccentric loading? When load is not passing through the centroid or bolt group, we will call this kind of loading as an eccentric loading and corresponding connection we often call this as a eccentric connection. So we have defined eccentric loaded connection. Now next question is how we find forces in each bolt when we have a group of bolt that is eccentric loaded. Now to answer this question we will make a few assumptions and these assumptions are the first is my forces in the bolt that is in the elastic range. So material is following elastic behavior. So once I am assuming elastic behavior we will assume basically linear increase in the forces and the stresses. So linearity is available in this case. Now once I have linear assumption that is elastic assumption then I can also use principle of superposition that is valid for linear function. So second assumption we have that is superposition and third assumption we will make that is forces in each bolt 
is proportional to the distance from the center of uh, center of gravity of the bolt groups so in other word i can write force f is proportional to the distance so if i have ith bolt then force is proportional to ith distance of that bolt from the center of gravity so let us try to find the forces in each bolt so first we will discuss use of superposition so basically this is my initial situation i have a gusset plate and column here and then this is applied a force p now this is the initial situation now we can break this situation into two parts that is first part is this and the second part is this so basically this is a eccentric loaded connection that is applying a force p and this force is also trying to apply a moment because this has a distance e or it has an eccentricity so basically in this case we have a direct shear force and we also have a moment so direct shear will come through this force and moment will come due to the eccentricity so what we can do is we can break this problem into two parts one part i can transfer this force to the bolt centroid so that is this one and the second part i can consider the effect of moment and then i can sum this to get the final effect so basically what i am doing is i am using principle of superposition that is my problem of direct shear plus moment can be written individually in terms of pure shear and in terms of pure moment so in this case this is example of pure shear and this one is an example of pure moment so in this case this is pure moment now let us analyze these two cases separately so first let us consider pure shear that is in this case the load is passing through the bolt cz so this load is passing through cz of the bolt now if you see this case i have basically made here this is the gusset plate only and this is the bolt so i have made a free body diagram of gusset plate and the bolt so if you see the gusset plate there is a force p and now if i consider equilibrium of gusset plate i have to have a force that is acting in the upward direction and this will act at each bolt hole so for example in this case this force will be here this force will be here and this is here so at each bolt there is a force that is acting in the upward direction and this is because for equilibrium of this gusset plate now if you see this force so there are six bolt in this case so we will have each force is equals to p by six now this is the force on the bolt hole and similarly the same force by using newton's third law will be applied to bolt in the downward direction so i can say on each bolt there is a force of p by 6 that is acting in the downward direction now if i have n bolts then i can say there is a force that is of magnitude p by n so in general i can say there is a force due to direct shear that is coming in the downward direction to the bolts that is a magnitude of p by n now let us consider case of pure moment so basically in this case we have a moment that is p times e so i am using that moment is equals to force times distance distance is e and force is p so on this gusset plate and column system a moment will come of p into e so we said one assumption is the forces is proportional to the distance from the centroid so basically let us first find the direction of these forces so actually what this movement is trying to do so i have only this gusset plate and these are the holes in this case so what this forces is trying to do this moment is trying to do is trying to rotate this gusset plate about the center of gravity so this is the center of gravity of this bolt group 
so this force is trying to rotate about this point so now if i see there is a force so if this is the line so there is a force that will come in this direction so there is a force and this is trying to rotate along this circle so there is a force that will come perpendicular to this uh, basically radius now and this point force if you consider a circle then this will come in this di direction that is tangential direction similarly here another force that will come that is tangential to the radius and in this case basically this is in this direction finally in this case you can draw a perpendicular and you can get the direction of force here also you can draw a perpendicular and you can find the direction of forces so you see we can find the direction of force in each bolt by drawing a perpendicular to the radius so basically we can show here so this is bolt 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we have 6 bolts so we can show the direction of forces on each bolt so on this is this on this in this direction in this direction this direction and this direction so this is the bolt forces so this one i can write in this direction so one important point to mention here is the forces in bolts and bolts hole is basically opposite so if you see the gusset plate you have a moment of m that is p times c in this direction and this is the bolts that we shown the forces so this is the forces that just we showed that r1 r2 perpendicular to the radius now if you see the bolt holes these forces will be opposite for example let us consider this bolt bolt number 5 on bolt 5 the force is coming in the downward direction so on the bolt to hold this will be in the upward direction similarly here this is opposite this is r4 and this is r3 so in this direction and in this case in this direction in this direction and in this direction so you see if i consider equilibrium of this gusset place if i take the moment about this center of gravity so this gusset plate is in equilibrium because this is trying to rotate in this direction and these forces are trying to rotate in the opposite direction so basically we will use this equilibrium to find magnitude of forces in each bolt and for that purpose we will also use the assumption that forces in each bolt is proportional to the distance so let us find magnitude of forces in each bolt and for that purpose we will say force in any bolt is proportional to the distance from the center of gravity so in this case we have the distances t1 d2 d3 and that is the distance of bolt from the cz of bolt group so we can write force in first bolt that is r1 is equals to k times d1 where k is the proportionality constant similarly we can write r2 is equals to k times d2 and we have 6 volt so finally we can write r6 is equals to k times d6 one important point to see in this case the bolts that is located at a greater distance are taking more forces for example r6 r6 is equals to k times t6 so this bolt is taking more force and this bolt is taking less force so i can say d1 d6 d3 d4 are the largest distance so these bolts are taking maximum amounts of force and these two bolts that is d2 and d5 these bolts are taking relatively lesser amount of force so now let us consider equilibrium of this plate system that is a gusset plate and we will assume that there is no friction so neglecting friction between plates so we have a 
plate of column and we have another plate that is plate of gusset so between these two plate there is a chance of some friction and basically there will be friction in practical but we will assume the all frictions are negligible in this case and we can write rotational equilibrium of this gusset plate so basically if i write rotational equilibrium i can write moment that is external moment me is equals to moment by all the forces so i can write r1 times this distance that is d1 r2 times this distance d2 and if i sum then this should be equals to the moment that is externally applied so i can write r1 times d1 plus r2 times d2 and this goes to r6 times d6 and this is equals to moment applied in this case p times e so if i plug the value of r1 that is k times d1 so this becomes k times d1 square k times d2 that is k times d2 square and this is r6 is basically k times d6 so this becomes k times d6 square and this is equals to p times e so from here i can write k is equals to p times e divided by summation of d i square where i goes from 1 to 6 in this case we have 6 volt in some cases we have if n volts then we can write P e is equal P e divided by summation of d i square i is equals to 1 to n or in short we can simply write P e divided by summation of d i square. So now we can write force in any bolt for example r1 that is k times d1 so this is the value of k so if I plug the value of k this is the force in basically first volt similarly in ith volt we can write force r i that is k times d i and this is equals to p e divided by summation d i square and this times d i so basically now we have calculated this force r i in terms of applied moment m and d i that is applied moment m is equals to p times e so this is the force in ith volt now let us try to find component of these forces in each bolt so let's say this is my ith bolt so this is ith bolt on this bolt force r i is acting in this direction and this point is basically cz of bolt group so this is the CZ and this distance that is X coordinate that is XI and this distance is YI and this distance is DI basically DI is under root XI square plus by YI square in this case and this angle is theta. Now we are interested to find forces in X direction and forces in Y direction. So basically we can write RIX and rix is nothing but in this direction that is ri sin theta so if i take component of this force along the x direction and sin theta is from this triangle i can write sin theta is by i and divided by di similarly i can write ri by this is equals to r i cos theta that is r i times cos theta is x i divided by d. So these are two force components that we have found in x and y direction. So why we are taking the component 
this is because at the beginning we said we will use superposition so we have now effect of moment and initially we have also calculated the effect of shear so what we will do is we will take the component in each direction and we will add the effect of shear and effect of pure moment in each direction and finally we will take the resultant for that purpose only we are taking the component of forces in each direction so let us find the resultant force so due to direct shear in each bolt that is the ith bolt we have force is equals to p by n and this is acting in the downward direction so my y direction is in the downward direction now due to pure moment we have calculated the forces in each bolt that is ith bolt in the y direction and this force bars are i times x i divided by d now if i plug the value of r i that is p e divided by summation d i s squares times d i times x i divided by d i uh, that is d i so basically d i cancels in this case so we will have so this di and this di cancel so we will have pe summation di square times xi similarly we can write forces in x direction that is rix pe divided by summation di square times by i so these are the forces in x direction and the y direction due to pure moment now if i want to find resultant force i have to add the forces in the y direction and the x direction and take the square root so let us find resultant force in the ith bolt so i have to add force in y direction and then r i x whole square now I know the value of Riy and Rix, so we can plug this value. So Riy is Pe divided by summation Di square and this is Xi and this is P by N whole square. And same thing here, Pe divided by summation Di square and in this X direction, I will have coefficient of by I. So this will give me the resultant force in any ith bolt. We can also write the same expression in terms of moment. So that is I can replace PE with M and this equation becomes like this. So M divided by summation di square and times by I whole square. So this is the expression for resultant force in the ith bolt. Now we can use this expression for more complex cases. For example, if the load is inclined on the gusset plate. So let's say in this case, we have a gusset plate, same thing connected to a column. And in this case, force is inclined. Now if this force is inclined, it will have two component one component is horizontal that is a magnitude of h and another component is vertical let's call magnitude of p now this the vertical force is at a distance of ev that is eccentricity and the horizontal force from the bolt centroid at a distance of eh now again we have let's say n number of bolts and we have to find resultant force in each bolt. So we'll use the idea that we just developed. So let's say first find what are the moments that we have. So there are two moments, one due to this horizontal force, another moment due to this vertical force. Due to horizontal force, moment will be h times eh and this will try to rotate in this direction and due to this p the moment will be p times corresponding eccentricities ev and this will also try to rotate in the same direction 
सो इन दिस केस वी हैव टोटल मोमेंट ऑफ ई एच प्लस पी टाइम्स ई बी नाउ लेट अस फाइंड टोटल फोर्सेस इन एक्स डायरेक्शन एंड बाई डायरेक्शन सो इन एक्स डायरेक्शन वी हैव ए फोर्स ऑफ एच बट दिस फोर्स विल बी अप्लाइड टू ऑल द बोल्ट्स सो वी हैव टू डिवाइड बाई एन to get the force in ith bolt and then we have to add the force in ith bolt in the x direction and this force or ix we have already calculated and this can be also written in terms of moment that is m divided by summation di square times in this case uh, this is x so this will be by so this is by i now similarly we can write forces in the y direction so this will becomes p by n plus everything will remain same summation di square and this will become xi so now i can get the resultant force in the ith bolt or i is simply a square root of these two terms so we can write here h by n and this is m divided by summation di square by i and this raised to the power 2 and then this term p by n m divided by summation di square xi and raised to the power 2 so this will give me the resultant force in the ith bolt so up to this point of time we discuss how we can calculate the resultant force in the ith bolt in different scenarios now how we design such kind of bolting system that is eccentric bolted system so there are some steps that we follow to design such kinds of bolt and the first step is to find the number of bolts of course we have to choose what is the diameter of the bolt we are going to use what is the pitch distance and all this geometrical parameter once we assume then we can find number of bolts using this formula so this is a initial guess for the number of bolts so n is equals to under root 6m n dash p v s t so what are these terms so we can show here so this p is the pitch distance and in this case m is the applied moment and vst is the design shear strength of a single bolt and this can be found using is 800 so there are procedure and we have already discussed in previous videos how we can calculate designed shear strength of a bolt and n is the number of bolts sorry n dash is the number of rows of bolts so if i have two rows of bolt in this case then in this case n dash will be equals to 2 so if we have two vertical rows then we have to use n dash is equals to 2 so using this we can calculate an approximate number of bolts that can be used now once i know the total number of bolt we can also calculate basically resultant force in the critical bolt and the critical bolt is the bolt that has the highest force that is the largest amount of force and that is farthest bolt because the force in the bolt is proportional to the distance so any bolt that is at the largest distance from the cz so this is my cz and this is the bolt and this distance di so this is the maximum distance in that case this bolt will be the critical bolt using the formula that we discussed earlier we can calculate ri that is the resultant force in this bolt that is the critical bolt so this force is the demand so that is this force is required to be registered by the bolt so we have to calculate the capacity of the bolt that is the strength of the bolt using the code and finally i have to check whether my capacity that is calculated in this step that is the third step is the greater than the demand 
that is calculated in the second step that is the force required once i have this inequality satisfied my design is safe otherwise i have to reiterate the process i have to change the number of bolts or i have to change vertical arrangement pitch distance number of vertical rows so if i do this exercise trial and error procedure they can come across economical design so we can stop here in other videos we will discuss one more kinds of eccentric connection in that case you will see the bolts are also in tension apart from the shear in this video we discuss only the bolts that is in the shear in the next class or next video we'll discuss a board that has shear as well as tension thank you